Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. It's a great day to worship the Lord, yes? Yes. Absolutely. And a very happy Mother's Day to all our mothers out here and all those who fulfill that mothering role. And um, anybody here have a mother? (laughs) Ah, yes. Yes. All right. Well, happy Mother's Day to all those mothers as well. Those that have gone before us and passed on the faith and those who are still with us. Um, As far as announcements for today, I'm a little bit um, thrown off my game this morning. I am so sorry to hear of um, the sudden death of Sandy Bryan's brother, Fred. Um, He died on Friday night. And um, we will be remembering that family in prayer. You're welcome. What other announcements need to come before the congregation? Or prayer requests? I have a prayer request. There you are. (laughs) Yes. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, we'll add her to the prayer list. We're also adding Gary, your brother. Um, he's got surgery coming up, so we're holding him in prayer. Yeah. And Judy? Terry Sloan? Carrie? Okay. Thank you. Yes. Pat, and it was Thuman? Thuman, T-A-U-M-A-N. Okay. Okay. Any others? All right. If there are no other announcements, oh, one other announcement. Next week is Pentecost Sunday, and so we're going to be wearing red. red. Yes. It's also what, Sumner and Kaylee? Sumner? Poke your head out. Tell me. What is it? Sumner? Yeah? Is it true, Kaylee? Yeah, I threatened them today that um, they'd have to write a 10-page paper or they'd have to come back next year, and they weren't too cool with that, so we're going to do it anyway. (laughs) so you'll want to keep both these young people in your prayers this week as they um, prepare for their day of affirmation of baptism okay i think that's all i have we've got council meeting we've got yeah you know this stuff let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship with our prelude
turn to page 211 as we stand and confess our faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you with all our and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and give us. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please stand as we sing our opening hymn.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. pray. O God, form the minds of your faithful people into your one will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise, that amid all the changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found. Your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please. A reading from Acts. One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out of her that very hour. But when her owners saw that, but when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, 
These men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they have given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he, was supposed, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. And then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, and you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord. Today's psalm is Psalm 97, and we will sing it. A reading from Revelation. See, I am coming. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with, the test, with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let everyone who hears say, come, and let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes to take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the... The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. 
the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel comes to us today from John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus prayed, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you have given me, because you have loved me before the foundations of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you. And these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I invite our young friends forward for the children's sermon. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning and good morning. Whoops. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am so glad to see you all today. It's a good day, right? Have you done what you need to do yet? Yeah. Yeah? What what did you need to do? Yes, ma'am? Absolutely. So has everybody said happy Mother's Day to their moms yet? Oh, well, okay, okay. Um, I, I called my mom. Yeah, I called my mom bright and early this morning. That was good. And you know what? You know, one of the ways that I remember my, my grandma's is with this cross. You ever notice this cross that I wear? No. No. This cross is the one that was given to me to remember my grandmother by. And it hangs on a chain from my other grandmother. So both my grandmothers, I remember with this cross. My grandma Green, she, oh my goodness, she loved the color pink and purple. And so every year I feel like I have to have a hanging basket of her favorite flower was also petunias around her garden. And so uh, I always need a hanging basket with pink or purple petunias. So. That's my hanging basket for my porch to remember my grandmother. Yeah. How do you remember your moms? What do you do for them? Yes. Give a Mother's Day gift. Give a Mother's Day gift. Sounds good. How did you remember your mom? You help her? Yeah. Good. How else do you remember your moms? Do other people help you with taking her out to eat or buying her flowers or a card or something like that? Alice? Alice? Uh, What was my program that mom bought me some flowers? (gasps) 
Nice. That's how your mom is good to you, isn't she, Alice? Yeah. You did what? Oh my goodness, it's a little early for that, isn't it? You, do you wear that out and about all the time? No, is it just for play? Yeah, my, my, my mom let me wear lipstick, but only at the house. Never out. Is that what your mom said? Well, I have a poem that is based on the 23rd Psalm. The 23rd Psalm goes, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Okay? But this one is, a, is redone for Mother's Day. The Lord is my mother, I shall not be in want. She makes me lie down in fresh, clean sheets and tucks me in and kisses me goodnight. And while I sleep, she sorts everything out, ready for the morning. She makes me cups of tea and ginger cake when I get home from school and shepherd's pie for supper with plenty of fresh vegetables. She leads me away from the TV to the kitchen table where we have a space to talk without interruptions. She listens to even the smallest of my worries and helps me to get things in perspective. She restores my soul. She guides me through the mysteries of how to be a righteous woman for her namesake. Even though I walk past the bus stop where the big boys threaten me and the mean girls laugh at me, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your strength beside me and your hand in mine, they comfort and sustain me. You prepare Sunday lunch for me in the presence of my enemies to remind me that I'll always have a place to belong. You have every confidence in me and my future. You are my champion and my biggest fan. My life overflows with the love you have given me from my very first breath to my first gray hair and beyond. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's one of the neat things that our moms give, you, give us. They give us all their love, and they also help us to learn more about the faith. So coming to church is one of the things our moms help us to figure out how to love the Lord, how to know Jesus, right? Right? Yeah? Yeah? Let's pray. Thank you, God, for our mothers who help us in faith to love you. Amen. All right. And if you would like to color something for your mother, I have some coloring sheets as well. A couple of different kinds. Would you like to color something for your mother? There you go. There are two different kinds. There you go. Well, do take that one. Would you like this one? That one? Okay. Anybody else need a coloring sheet? All right, here we go. All right, need a coloring sheet? Great, thank you. All right. Let's pray. Holy God, we give you praise that you have brought us to this house of worship. Guide us as we unite our voices, our hearts, and our minds in praise of you. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you. Amen. In my mind's eye... I see our gospel lesson for today, 
played out on a stage. The most important story ever told set into the form of a play. And we know we're near the closing scene of this famous play, and the 13 main characters are at the table enjoying the Passover meal on Jesus' last night here on earth. And there's been a lot of talking and joking and storytelling. The sounds of plates and cups at this meal and the smell of food. And then suddenly the stage goes dark. It goes silent and the actors freeze in place and the spotlight snaps on and Jesus is praying. Jesus is praying earnestly. In the midst of the hubbub of this meal, Jesus' mind is far removed. Looking ahead into the near future, where these men at the table with him will be confused and frightened. Jesus is looking ahead, worried for his friends, knowing that this night must end the way that we know it will end. In my mind's eye, Jesus praying in the spotlight, earnestly praying for the near future, for the men at this table. But Jesus is also praying this prayer far, far into the future. For people who will know him through the faith of others. People far into the future who will not hear him speak on this earth. He's praying for people far into the future who will not see his face on this earth. Jesus is praying for people far into the future who will not feel his healing touch on this earth. So here we are this far into the future. We can only experience Jesus through faith passed on to us from other people down through all those many decades. In my mind's eye, Jesus is praying in the spotlight and his eyes are seeing me and you. His heart is feeling your hurt. His smile is delighting in you. His smile is rejoicing in you and with you and with me. And so Jesus, praying in the spotlight with all sound and action stopped around him. He's praying earnestly for you, you, and me, and everyone, everyone who has come before us, and all who will come after us. He sees each and every one of us, this great multitude of all of us, he sees us this night, and he prays for us, and he yearns for all of us to be one. He yearns for us to know the joy of perfect unity, unity that Jesus shares with God the Father, unity that Jesus shares with God the Holy Spirit, Jesus yearns for us to know the kind of unity that seeks the very best in each other. Jesus yearns for us to know the kind of unity that desires the best for each other. Jesus is yearning in this prayer for us to know the kind of unity that brings out the best 
in each other. In my mind's eye, Jesus is praying in that spotlight, his eyes on each and every one of us. His eyes hold my gaze, and his eyes are filled with love, perfect, joyful, ever-present, seeking only the best for us, perfect love. May you see that gaze as well. Thanks be to God. Amen.
we turn to page 217 as we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please stand if you're able. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He descended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand. On this day, when we remember our mothers, let us offer our prayers to Jesus, the Son of Mary. Because on this earth we are all sons and daughters of Eve, let us pray for the whole world and the church universal that we might hold each other as brothers and sisters. Hear us, O God. As Rebekah gave birth to Jacob, and in so doing she gave birth to a whole nation, let us pray for our own nation and for all in authority. Lord, in your mercy. As Rachel's son Joseph was mistreated, beaten, and wrongly jailed, we pray for all in this world who are in trouble of any kind. We pray for the poor, the hungry, the imprisoned, and the victims of war, and all who live in terror's wake. Hear us, O God. As Hannah, the mother of Samuel, went to the house of the Lord to pray with earnest integrity, we pray for those in this community and especially other women praying earnestly to become mothers. Lord, Lord, hear us, O God. As Naomi took Ruth into her home, we pray for those who act as surrogate or spiritual mothers. We pray with gratitude for all those who give the gift of love and nurturing. Hear us, O God. As Elizabeth gave birth in old age and as she saw her son John the Baptist carried off to persecution, we pray for all those who are sick, those who are are suffering, and those with any need. We pray especially for those on our prayer list, for Gary Gossman, for Wilma Hunsecker, for Carrie Sloan, for Pat Thuman, and those whom we now name silently or aloud. Hear us, O God. And as as the Mary, the mother of our Lord, stood by the cross and watched her son die, we pray for those who are dying and all those saints who have gone on before us. You surround us, with the promises that you made by dying on the cross and rising again, the promise to be with us always. Lord, those promises are the ones that surround and comfort all who grieve. We pray especially for the family of Fred Fisher, that they would know your consolation. Hear us, O God. Lord Jesus, who wishes to gather your people as a mother hen gathers together her brood, we offer to you our prayers. Accept our gratitude for all who mother, bless all who mother, and give all mothers your comfort and strength, and help all of us, brothers and sisters, to be your family here on earth as we shall be in heaven. And we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
is at peace with one another. Stand. And we pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. You have raised us to new life in Christ. Give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, 
and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness, forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. And we pray as our Lord Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. So let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>